So how do we develop leaders? Well, I'm going to suggest five long-term solutions to the leadership crisis in the American church. Long-term solutions. And uh, <clears throat> first, we're going to look at internships and apprenticeships. As we did research, we found two churches out of those 146 pastors, two pastors out of the 146 pastors who were proactively developing leaders for outside their church. They were not thinking church little c, they were thinking church big C. And I was impressed with them. Jeff Bucknam is one of the pastors. He's a pastor of Northview Church in Abbotsford, British Columbia, a church of 3,500. And uh, he said this about leadership and pastors. The church has dropped the ball in leadership development. I believe seminaries are doing it, but not in a complete way. I don't think they can. Most of the skills we do, we learn by doing those skills. Preaching is like that. Leadership is like that. If churches aren't committed to hands-on residencies, there will be few safe places for young men to learn how to pastor people. Instead, we will continue to have theologically astute but practically ignorant young men taking pastorates that neither they nor their church are prepared to handle. Seminaries can only do so much, and unfortunately, it's not enough given the gravity of our work. In every other field, lawyer's article, that is, they do an internship. Uh, doctors have a residency. Teachers do student teaching. I don't believe that lawyers and doctors do a more significant work than we do. I would say it's the other way around. You can heal someone physically, but they're still going to die. You come to Christ and it's an eternal thing. They do not do a more significant work than we do. I wish every church would take an intern and have a fire date. Two years and you're gone. And then take on another intern. So internships, apprenticeships. Uh, Pastor Glenn Stevens is uh, at First Evangelical Free Church in Fargo, North Dakota. When, we, when I look at his profile, I'm saying, how can he possibly be doing as well as he's doing? He does not have the profile of a turnaround pastor. Far from it. But as a young pastor, a seasoned senior pastor took him under his wing, and he was uh, an apprentice for two years. And then he went and did a church plant. And I met the director of church planning at, at Talbot this last year in the DMN program. And he said, you know, this guy doesn't fit the profile of a church planner. I said, you're right, he doesn't. But he took a church, a church plant of 150 and grew it to 725. And then he came back to the church where he was apprenticed, and now they're redoing an apprenticeship program. And in two years, they've gone from 550 to 800, and they're bringing on interns and apprentices, not for their church. Jeff Bucknam brought on 10 Eight for a one-year period and two for a three-year period. The eight are Bible college graduates who are exploring the possibility, their divine design, should I be in full-time ministry? And they're not going to destroy the church if they say no. On the other hand, uh, they have two teaching interns. It's a three-year deal. They each preach three times during the year. That's six weekends, five services. And then their messages are evaluated every Wednesday. You don't even get that in seminary. But he said, we're not raising these guys up for our church. We're raising them up for the body of Christ larger. And my friends, we need to do the same thing over and over again. If 10% of the pastors are turnaround pastors, that's 40,000 pastors. If 20,000 pastors would take on an intern or an apprentice for two years and then turn them loose and do it again, you realize in, in 10 years we'd have 100,000 qualified, equipped pastors ready to take on the body of Christ. Jeff said some pastors will come to a church, they'll dump their theological dump truck at the front door. They don't know what to do with it. The church doesn't know what to do with it. They get blown out of the water and they're finished. Coaching and mentoring. We've already talked a lot about that. Coaching clusters. Uh, we've already talked about that. And then the boot camps. Esther did a great job of advertising for Gary and me. And uh, we appreciate that. And we're going to be going back there next March 
And there's some brochures back on the back table. I need to close. And so uh, I would like to close this way. Paul had a vision. The Apostle Paul had a vision. His vision was to glorify God by reaching people through preaching the gospel, planting churches, developing leadership, who would in turn preach the gospel, plant churches, develop leadership, and so it goes. And so it goes. And what we want to do is we who can need to invest in those who can't so that they can. John F. Kennedy said, if not us, who? If not now, when? The hour is late in America. And by the grace of God, let's train pastors. They're the key to the renewal of the churches in our country. They're the key to the future of the body of Christ here.